Today I'm going to show you how to speed up your editing process and reduce lag by using proxy files in Adobe Premiere Pro. Creating proxies is super easy and can be done with the click of a button. I just finished editing a feature film, which was shot on the red Komodo in 6K resolution. And even though I have a really powerful computer, I still created proxies for every single video file. This allowed me to edit and play back everything flawlessly without my computer lagging or freezing up. Before we jump into it, I want to thank Pond5 for sponsoring this video. They are the world's largest stock media marketplace with over 37 million videos in their library. I actually used a couple of drone shots from the Pond5 library for a feature horror movie I just made. They're super high quality videos that gave my film so much more production value. Pond5 has a special first time offer for Cineguac viewers. Click the link in the description below to receive a 20% discount on your first purchase. Anyway, without further ado, let's get started. Cineguac. So first of all, let me show you the proper way to import your footage into your project. Because if you import incorrectly, it could actually make the proxy creation process a lot longer than it needs to be. Like most people, I used to create a bin right here in the project window, and then go to File, Import, where I would find whatever folder contained all the video files I wanted to edit with. So I would select the folder and then hit Import. And then half the time I would get this file import failure message, which I would just kind of ignore. And then I would drop this down to look at the video files I just imported. There were all these subfolders and multiple files within each folder, and it just made absolutely no sense. In this case, I shot all of this footage on the red Komodo. And if you have any experience shooting with red cameras, it splits up each video recording into multiple files. So Premiere would import each individual file as opposed to just one file per shot. Premiere also had a hard time importing all the metadata, which is why I was getting served this annoying file import failure message. It still works obviously and you can totally edit this way, it's just not the most efficient way of importing your footage. Anyway, the point is I no longer import footage this way, and neither should you. So let's delete this folder and show you the right way to import footage into Premiere. What you want to do is go up here and select the Import tab. From here, we can find whichever folder we want to import. So let me select the same second unit folder as before. And over here you can title the bin whatever you want. Let's just keep it as is. And hit Import. Now, when we drop this down, you'll see all of our video files are neatly organized without all those unnecessary subfolders and duplicate files. So let's just drag one of these clips to the timeline. And you'll see we have this high-res 6K video clip which, depending on your computer specs, might lag when you play it back. So here's how you create proxy files. You can create proxies for each individual clip if you want, but we want to create proxies for every video file within this folder. So let's right click the folder and then scroll down to Proxy and select Create Proxies. Here we can select the format we want the proxies to be. You can do QuickTime, but I suggest H.264 only because I find it runs a lot faster and smoother and they're usually smaller in size. Next, we can determine where we want to save the proxy files. If you select Next to Original Media, it will automatically create a proxy folder next to every individual video clip. I find it's usually more organized to go with the second option. When we hit Browse, we can then select where on our computer we want to save all the proxy files. So let's just create a new folder within my second unit folder and call it second unit proxies, and hit create. And we can select that folder that we just created. So now it'll save every single proxy file to that folder. Hit OK. And now Media Encoder will automatically open and immediately begin converting every single video file into an H.264 proxy file. This might take a little while depending on your computer and how many files you're converting. Whenever that's done, you can just close Media Encoder. And if we go to our Finder and look for the proxy folder, 
you will see all the proxies are now neatly organized inside this folder. And if we drop this down and scroll all the way over, you'll see every proxy is listed as attached. Now, if we play this clip on the timeline, it's actually still playing back in the full 6K resolution. So what we want to do is enable the proxy files. All we have to do is go to this toggle proxies button. When we select the button, it will automatically play back the proxy files. If you look extra closely, you can even see the quality of the footage degrade a little bit. Now, if the toggle proxies button is missing, all you have to do is hit this little plus right here, look for the toggle proxies button, and then just drag and drop it to the command window. Once the proxies are created, they're extremely easy to detach or reattach if you need. For example, if we right click the folder, go to proxy, and then hit detach proxies, it automatically removes the proxies from your project. And then to reattach, like if your proxy folder gets moved to a different hard drive or something, and you need to tell Premiere where they went, you can simply just go to proxy, and then hit attach proxies. Go to attach, and then find the folder where your proxies are, select, and hit OK. And just like that, the proxies are reattached again. And what's great about Premiere is that if you go to export your project, it will automatically export in the same higher resolution as your source footage. Even if you forget to toggle proxies off, it will still export in the highest possible resolution. I really hope you learned a thing or two. As always, these videos take a really long time to put together, so show me some love, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you next time.